Hi, good evening everyone. Um, I am turning Japanese tonight. A um, little bit disorganised today, so you'll have to forgive me. But um, I've got three Japanese um, dishes to make today. And um, it's something that I really quite enjoy myself. Um, although I must admit Japanese food was not something I was very familiar with growing up. Um, growing up in a Chinese household, Japanese food was just never on the menu. Um, so I don't think I even had sushi till I was like in my early 20s or something like that. Um, but as a little bit of a um, uh, celebration for cooking Japanese tonight, celebration's not the right word I'm looking for, but um, I've got some of my favourite gin here, Roku gin. Um, it's just got a lovely fragrance to it. So I'm having some uh, Japanese gin while cooking Japanese tonight. Um, so I'm going to start with um, a miso glazed eggplant. Um, eggplant is one of those things that I absolutely love um, in all different types of cuisines. And um, it can be one of those things that a lot of people don't know how to cook. There's a lot of... Um, you know, uh, rumours going around that you have to salt it. If you don't salt it, it gets bitter and that sort of thing. I've never had an issue with that. Half the time I can't be bothered and I don't bother salting it at all. So with Japanese um, eggplant, that's a step that you can skip, which is really handy because who's got the time for that? Um, so I'll just pop you guys down... And uh, hopefully you can see my board here. So I've just got a regular eggplant here. Um, you can just use whatever type you want to. doesn't matter too much. So all I'm going to do is just chop it straight down the centre and just halve it. Now eggplant is one of those things that can absorb a fair bit of fat and oil and it can become a bit greasy. So um, just one of those things to be slightly aware of not to put too much oil into it because it is like a sponge. Um, so I've just got my cast iron pan over there. I'm just using, hang on, I better move my soda stream out the way. It's always blocking the view, isn't it? How's that? There we are. My Worcestershire sauce. We'll move that out the way. How do people say Worcestershire? Oh, hi, Hayley. How are you? Worcestershire, Worcestershire. <laughs> it's one of those uh, crazy uh, words, isn't it? Um, so just move a few things out of the view. Okay, so I've got my pan heating up and I'm just going to add a little bit of vegetable oil to it. Um, I like using a more neutral flavoured oil when I cook with um, Asian type of flavours. So at this point, all we're basically looking for... Whoops! <laughs> that was a nice clang. Um, is to just... Um, cook it down a little bit to get it nice and charred um, but before I'm putting it in the pan something I forgot to mention was that I'm going to do a crisscross type of pattern with my knife um, by cutting into the eggplant it'll help allow it to cook more evenly as well and when we glaze it with the miso um, glaze it'll soak into all the um, cuts really quite nicely so I'll just do like a bit of a diamond shaped scoring. Now you don't want to cut all the way through. You still want to keep that skin intact on the bottom, um, mainly just so um, all the juices and uh, marinade and things don't 
completely leak out. Now you'll also notice that it's going brown and that's just um, a matter of oxidization so it's nothing to worry about really. So at this point I'm just going to pop it on the pan, swish it around in the oil a little bit and we just want to get that kind of that cooking process started and to get that nice and charred um, before we add our marinade. I will be doing these in the air fryer to finish off um, the grilling but you can use um, the grill under like in your oven on the grill setting um, or you can completely do this in the pan if you like um, it's just whatever is your preference um, I like the air fryer because I find it cooks a lot faster and I can just leave it and not worry about having to watch it all the time. I'm just having to put a bit more oil in because that first half of the eggplant has completely absorbed the oil I already put in. So I'll just do that one. Just giving that a little swirl around. And I'm just going to put the lid on that now. So now I've got, um, I might just turn that down a tad. Now I've got my um, large uh, frying pan on. Um, this is what I will be doing some teriyaki chicken in. So I'll just grab all the ingredients for that. And I'll be right back. How are you? I'm going to take my cardio off actually. It's kind of getting warm in the kitchen, especially with the nice hot pan. Okay, so um, I'll be making a teriyaki chicken and broccoli tonight. Um, so I've just got some diced chicken thigh here. Um, I like using the thigh with a bit of skin still on it. Just has so much more flavour, um, and having that fattier sort of cut, um, it's just the moisture remains in in the meat. It doesn't dry out. It's just juicy and tasty, and all of that goodness adds into the overall flavour. I find um, chicken breast is something I hardly ever cook with. So I'm just going to add a teensy bit of um, oil to my pan. Now a fair bit should come out of the skin and the um, natural fats in the chicken as well so you probably don't need too much. Now this particular version of teriyaki I'm doing today um, is going to be sugar free. So I'm going to be using um, this monk fruit sweetener, which is basically, um, I think, stevia, urethritol. No, so it doesn't have stevia in it at all. This one's urethritol. <laughs> I'm really bad at pronouncing. It's basically an alcohol sugar, um, which has a zero carb uh, content. So it's good for diabetics and those on a low carb diet who um, are watching their sugar intake and it's I think it's only got like a two percent oh, a one percent monk fruit extract so really the labeling and packaging uh, marketing can be so deceiving can't it saying it's a monk fruit sweetener but it's only one percent monk fruit so you know um, really it's just your wreath toll if that's how you are erythritol I have no idea how you pronounce that, but it's an alcohol sugar. Um, just check on that eggplant. Okay. 
That is looking beautiful, guys. Look at that colour on the eggplant. So I'll just turn it around now to the other side. Inside down. Let that continue to sweat and um, char a little bit. So into the pan. Now I should have taken this chicken out of the fridge earlier. It is still quite cold. Um, I would advise taking it out maybe up to 20 minutes to half an hour before you start cooking just so you're not shocking the pan with super cold meat and it browns a lot easier and faster but we'll see how we go it's cast iron so hopefully it's starting to smoke now um let me know. i'm gonna turn the exhaust fan on let me know if that noise is too much guys it's just on low hopefully you can still hear me so these exhaust fans on the pan is smoking hot your chicken pieces with the skin side down um, and that way the oils and the fats from the skin can render out first um, and really get nice and caramelized. I'm going to make the teriyaki marinade. You just want to brown the chicken um, and while it's doing that you can make the marinade for it. So I am going to use, um, I'm leaving mirin out of this particular teriyaki marinade. Um, mainly because I'm wanting it to be uh, less of a sugar content but you can add some mirin to this as well so I've got just plain soy sauce some rice wine vinegar and some cooking sake um, you could just use drinking sake if you like but that might be a bit of a, a, a waste um, you might prefer to drink it rather than cook with, with the good stuff. So I've turned the pan down a little bit now. So it's just gently sizzling away. Um, so with the marinade, I've still got my rubber band on here from when I was uh, watching my sourdough <laughs> rise up and down. So for this um, I want to use a quarter cup of soy. It's about a quarter cup there. And then I'll put in half a cup of um, water. <laughs> and then I'm going to use equal portions of the rice wine vinegar and um, the sake. So traditionally, um, so I'll put in about two tablespoons of each. Traditionally, you would use sugar in this. Um, so something like 
palm sugar, coconut sugar, brown sugar, um, or even white sugar is fine. Or another alternative is to use honey. So that can be quite nice as well for an all natural type of sugar. And I'm going to actually, um, so also with a teriyaki sauce, traditionally you would use say a cornstarch as a thickener, so corn flour to thicken. I'm going to use xanthan gum today. So this again is keeping it low carb and keto friendly, um, which I'm not very strict about personally because I'm going to be making some agadashi tofu as well and that I'm coating in corn flour. But really the, the amount that you're coating isn't that much. So if you're doing low carb rather than strict um, the keto, for example, a little bit won't, won't hurt, but you can also leave the cornstarch out and just um, sprinkle it with some salt and pepper and fry it like that. Or psyllium husk is even a really good one with a neutral flavor. Um, which is I've, I use to crumb schnitzels and that sort of thing sometimes. So with your xanthan gum, you only need a quarter of a teaspoon. Um, the xanthan gum acts as a thickener. And you'll see this in a lot of um, ingredients as well, in uh, on the back of jars and that sort of thing. If you read the ingredients list, you'll find um, xanthan gum is one of the, the key ingredients to a lot of uh, packaged food as well. So I'll just give this um, chicken a bit of a toss. So with the uh, monk fruit sweetener, I'm going to be putting, let's do two, two tablespoons. So they do say it's equal portions um, compared to sugar, but I personally don't like things too sweet in flavor anyway. So um, I'm just going to add enough for my liking. And then I'm going to use a quarter of a teaspoon of the xanthan gum. So if you were using corn flour, you probably need maybe a tablespoon into this particular mix. Um, and you just want to give everything a whisk. Just whisk it all together. So in here I've got soy, the sake, the um, rice wine vinegar, the sweetener, the monk fruit sweetener and um, some xanthan gum which I'm not sure if it's uh, if I'm looking at the floaters in there I think that might be the sweetener. So now that the chicken is nice and browned I'm going to add a heap of garlic into it because I love garlic. Um, you can use ginger. I don't have any ginger today, so I'm just leaving it out. But that is definitely something that um, you can throw in there too. Just grabbing a spoon for the ginger. Oh, sorry, the garlic. <laughs> ginger on my mind. I tried growing some. Um, I sprouted like a bit of ginger maybe like two months ago two three months ago and it started growing roots and everything and um, I thought oh yeah looks good enough to plant so I tried planting it but um, yeah after it just never came up out of the soil so alright so the um, 
garlic is in, we'll just let that, that slowly brown. And then I really like my broccoli quite firm and crispy. I don't like it soggy and um, yes, the more garlic the better, Matthew. Um, it's definitely one of my favorite things. Sometimes it's just never enough garlic. But yeah, so with the broccoli, I just like to, blanch, oh, not blanch, but just toss it through till it's nice and bright green. I just don't like it going soggy and gross. It's not really my, my thing. Oh, um, actually, sesame oil. I forgot about that one. So a bit of sesame oil into the marinade also. So that was about, I squeezed some in. It was about a teaspoon, roughly. Okay, so that's that. Now we'll do the miso, which I left in the fridge. I'll go grab it. Sorry, guys. Give me a sec. some miso paste here this is a white miso which is um, a little bit more mild in flavor it's not as strong as your red miso and the good thing with Japanese cooking is that once you have your um, set of ingredients like with all your sauces and things, a lot of it's interchangeable with the different types of recipes. Um, so, sorry. Keep disappearing on you. <laughs> so I've got some of my fermented black garlic here, which um, I'm going to use in the miso glaze. So fermented black garlic, if anyone hasn't tried it, it's really quite sweet in flavor. It, um, after it ferments, it caramelizes and um, it just makes this beautiful, um, almost candy-like flavor to the garlic. It's just so sweet and um, has this lovely umami flavor as well. So I'm just mashing it up in my um, cup here. And what I'm going to do is mix this with um, my miso paste. So here's about two tablespoons. We probably won't need all this to be honest. Just making sure it's not burning. Um, yeah, I don't think we'll need all of this only because I'm only doing one eggplant. So it's just me that'll be eating it. Um, so there's really only so much glaze that uh, you will need for the two halves. So I've kind of used, it looks like about an equal portion of miso paste to um, the garlic. So about, it's about a tablespoon I reckon. So just give that a good mix and to this I am also going to add some soy. going to add some of the sake as well. So equal portions again, one soy, one sake, and a bit of sesame oil. Just a dash into there. So you can use um, honey in this, which would be really quite lovely as well, and it'll caramelize quite nicely when um, the eggplant is grilling. So I'm not sure, I'll do it over here so you guys can kind of see the consistency. It's um, just like a thick paste. I'm going to use that whisk though and just give it a good mix through. If you had like a mini food processor or something like that, you're more than welcome to just throw it all into the bowl of the processor and, and give that a whisk together. 
just to make sure all the ingredients are combined nicely. But that is looking great. And the good thing about this um, food also is that you don't need to add extra salt. There's enough salt in the soy and the miso um, that you generally wouldn't need any more extra salt. Okay, so with that eggplant, I'll just take it off the heat. I'll give this um, chicken a bit of a toss now. spatulas out to uh, toss it all through. I'll use my um, metal spoon. That way I can scrape up all the garlic and, and bits that are on the bottom of the pan. Chicken is browning beautifully. I'll um, turn the camera around so you guys can have a look at the chicken. There it is there with all the garlic and here is that beautiful eggplant. So what we'll do now, while well, I've got the camera in hand, I've just got my um, paste there that we've just made and I'm just going to brush that over the eggplant. Get that into some of those crevices. So I'm going to now pop that into my air fryer um, for just a couple of minutes. So maybe like four minutes or something like that and we'll see how that goes. There it is in there. So I'm popping it on 200 for four minutes. We'll see how that goes. Now at this point, I'm going to be throwing in the broccoli. Oops, there's one stuck in there. And I'll turn that right up. waiting for the heat to come up on that. I'll show you what's happening over here with the tofu. So I'm just going to turn this pan back on low for the moment. So here I've got some silken tofu and the silken tofu I've just cut into large um, squares. So these are probably an inch and a half square. And I've just let it um, sit in the fridge to drain and to dry out a little bit. So we want to coat them um, just to get like a nice crunch on them. And you know what, I'm going to, no, I'll grab a new plate, I think. And I'll grab the corn flour while I'm at it. <laughs> so I might, um, Flip the camera back around so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so we've got the tofu here and the plate. Just gonna sprinkle some corn flour on the plate. Give me a sec, I'm going to grab my salt and pepper mix. Mm. 
multitasking here. I'm stirring the uh, chicken and broccoli. Okay, so just a bit of the salt and pepper mix into the corn flour as well. I'm just going to give that a little bit of a mix together. And simply, all you want to do is just coat the tofu. Just roll it around in there really quite lightly. And that's going to provide a really nice crunchy coating. Now I'm just going to at this point put the um, sauce into the pan with the broccoli. So I might just rinse my hand for a sec. So you'll see the um, pan has now come up to heat again. The broccoli is looking beautiful and bright green, not overcooked and not overdone at all. The chicken's cooked through. thickening up um, from the xanthan gum and it's coating um, the chicken and broccoli really well. I'll bring you guys back around actually so you can have a nice look at that um, teriyaki chicken. So you could serve this with some rice or soba noodles, udon noodles. Um, I will most likely cook myself some um, edamame noodles to have this with. And so that is the teri teriyaki chicken low carb friendly done. So I'll just leave that off the heat for the moment. I'll turn the oil up in the other frying pan. I've got a few more um, tofu pieces to coat here. Oops, looks like it's a sticking layer of tofu is coming off <laughs> onto the plate. So I'll probably just throw those in as they're ready. Might need some more um, Oops, that one's broken apart. I'm using um, silken tofu here as well, so it is quite tender and delicate compared to, say, your firmer tofus. So they're just in the pan. You want them just to sizzle away nicely, not to go too crazy. And uh, you might want to be a bit more gentle with your silken tofu than I am right now. Um, and again, if you don't want to use um, your corn flowers, whoops, it's a bit too much 
pepper salt there. Um, if you don't want to use your corn flours for coating your um, tofu with, you can just season it with a bit of pepper salt. So this um, pepper salt mixture I have here is uh, Sichuan pepper and um, white pepper and just salt as well. Now while that tofu is gently frying away, I'm going to make a quick little um, broth for it. Slip you around. So the broth um, agadashi tofu is normally served with like a dashi type of broth, but I find that is one ingredient that is very hard to get locally um, and easily. So unless you're going to your um, Asian grocers and that sort of thing, um, I'm not sure where you can actually get dashi uh, stock from. It's made of um, all sorts of uh, aromatics of like um, bonito and kelp and seaweed and um, a few different um, Japanese ingredients in the actual stock itself. So I kind of cheat and what I do is let's grab a little saucepan and um, I just make like you can buy this in um, any supermarket, any Coles or Woolies sell this as well and it's basically just like a little um, little sachets of uh, like a miso soup type of thing. Um, so it's this stuff here. And you can just use your um, your miso, like red or white miso if you've got that. But let's see if I can go here somewhere. Tiny saucepan here full of water. Might need scissors to get into this one. And so all you would do is squeeze that out into your little pot. And I think this particular one has. Um, I've lost the, the main packaging on it now, but um, it has other ingredients in it that's similar to dashi. So it has um, your kelp and fish stocks and um, that sort of thing in it. I'll have to check the ingredients next time I pick up another pack. wooden spoon they like to cook with. Um, I do, I'm a bit particular and I have my favourite spoons but I can't find the one I wanted to use. So this one will do. It's kind of like when you have your favourite mug that you like to drink out of or something like that. I have my favourite spoons that I like to cook with. So at this point also I'm going to flip the um, tofu round and make sure it's browning on all sides. This little fella here is one of my favourite uh, cooking utensils to use actually. I'll just turn the heat up a little bit more on that. Uh, 
And let's have a look at the um, eggplant. out of this air fryer basket without completely having it fall apart. If you guys can see that. Um, so I've got some coriander that I'm growing as well so if you don't enjoy coriander then um, that is definitely something you can leave off this but I love garnishing with it I just think it's so pretty and adds that little bit of extra flavor as well which is really quite nice I'll just chop a little bit to pop on top I've also got some toasted sesame here, so black and white sesame. Give that a sprinkle. I love using a combination of black and white. Um, I just feel like the colours just really complement each other. Um, a little bit of spring onion on there also. And that is the Japanese eggplant done. don't want to tilt it too much. I'm scared it's going to um, fall off the plate there. But that's the Japanese eggplant. Um, so we'll just tofu. That's almost nice and golden on all the sides also. I'll grab a serving plate for that one. Garnish there. So 
So I'll turn, I'll grab the phone and I'll just turn this around. So that there is the agadashi tofu. Beautiful golden tender pieces of tofu in a lovely miso broth garnished with nori. And then we've got our um, miso glazed eggplant here as well. And the um, teriyaki chicken and broccoli, which is looking absolutely fabulous also. So I would like to thank everyone for watching tonight and um, I hope you enjoyed my Japanese uh, cooking um, tonight. I do have a um, recipe book available on my Tash Can Cook store um, with a heap more Japanese uh, recipes for you to complement these three meals with. So um, if you'd like to have a look, Tash Can Cook, uh, go into my shop and you'll find the Japanese cookbook there as well. Thanks everyone for watching and have a great night. Bye.